All right, guys, welcome to the channel. I'm going to do my best to make this video as short, straightforward, to the point as I possibly can. Uh, just simply because of the nature of this video, I'm assuming that if you're watching it, it's not for entertainment value, but it's more so for uh, educational purposes. And you've, you probably need to make a decision on which tripod you're going to get, and that's why you're here. So I'm going to try to try to cover this as quickly as possible and uh, not get too too caught up in the details that don't really matter. So I'm just going to go through uh, my four different tripod setups and talk about the pros and the cons of each and some of the characteristics that I like, some of the characteristics that I don't like, and maybe it'll give you some direction towards what you actually want to purchase. Starting off, I do want to give a huge thank you to uh, three companies here. Uh, first being two veg tripods. All of the tripods and the heads in this video, with the exception of one, which my camera is sitting on right now, is from two veg tripods um next company is going to be coltac they have provided me with some bags uh and then sun and shadow they have provided me with this uh tack table that this bag is sitting on on top of the tripod we'll get into that in just a little bit um starting off i'm going to go over right here this is the two veg tripods this is the infill so this is two veg tripod smallest tripod this one was designed for glassing and spotting uh, so using with spotting scopes and binoculars and uh, what have you, that was kind of the main idea behind this uh, this tripod. So as you can see, it's a three pull leg system. So you've got three pulls. Uh, so really, you've got four leg systems. So I will uh, I'll talk in leg systems for the purpose of this video. So this is a four leg four piece leg system with um, with a center column. So now, obviously, the benefit of this tripod is going to be very lightweight, weighs next to nothing. Um, but the con of it is obviously uh, max height is right there. But given the nature of this tripod, it was designed for uh, kneeling. So, you know, being on your knees, uh, using binoculars, using a spotting scope for mainly for those uh, backcountry hunters. You spend a lot of time behind glass, spend a lot of time, uh, you know, sitting on sitting on the hillsides. Works really good for that. Um, I do use this one. Well, there we go. I do use this one for shooting um, quite a bit, but primarily I am using it for glassing, uh, whether that be with a spotting scope or binoculars, what have you. So there are some... Uh, there are some advantages to a small tripod. Like I mentioned, it is really, really lightweight, packs down really, really small. So if you're planning on spending a lot of time, uh, you know, packing around with a tripod, something like this might be a good option. Works really good well for glassing, as I mentioned. If you're a homeowner, when's the last time that you checked on the title of your home? If you're like myself and the answer is never, then you are a prime victim to one of the fastest growing crimes in the US. The FBI calls it house stealing. There's these criminal organizations that specialize in stealing your house while you're living in it. What these scammers do is, is they transfer the title of your home, then they take out loans and put your house as collateral, then they disappear leaving you with an absolute financial and legal nightmare. And it's so easy, all they have to do is fill out a quick claim deed that shows that you sold your house to a fake person that doesn't even exist. I live in South Carolina and this is how easy it is to do it. Then they'll add your address, your name, and even a fake signature. And then they will use a notary stamp they got off of Amazon, and they will give it a fake notary seal. The fact of the matter is, house stealing has never been easier than it is today. Just because of how much of your information, my information, all of our information is out there online. It makes it really easy for them to pull off this crime. That's why I'm using today's video sponsor, which is Home Title Lock. You punch in your address, they do a complete title scan, make sure that your home is still in your name. Now, you can use code operator overalls, and that'll give you a 30-day free trial, or you can just use the link that I've got pinned in the description of this video or pinned in the top of the comment section. Again, that's code operator overalls, and that's 30 days free trial to their service, which is a complete title scan. Make sure that your house still belongs to you. This is my hunting tripod when I'm hunting in the mountains. Really easy to take in on a pack, um, so I can throw it in throw it in my backpack. With the head that I have on it now, it's just an Arca head. We're going to get into heads in a little bit later on, and we'll talk about that as well. 
But the cool thing about it is, you know, I can, with just one tripod, go ahead and knock it out next notch. So with this one tripod, it works really well when I've got my glass on it. So I'm set up there. And then since it is ARCA, and I'm running ARCA on my rifle, well, this one tripod be in the kneeling position, which is a good position to be taking a shot from, you know, pop off the glass and then can immediately pop in my rifle. And that is all with the same tripod. So I've only got to carry one. Uh, if I want to, I can pop the rifle off, throw my camera on. That's just the benefits of ARCA, not necessarily this tripod. Mm, excuse me, this tripod. So the benefits of something small like this is obviously it's compact, it's lightweight but typically you're gonna be sacrificing on the max height that it can extend. So if you need some versatility, uh, depending on your terrain, environment, shooting position, you are gonna be extremely limited. Also with those smaller legs, well, ju it's just physics. Uh, there's there's gonna be less stability with the thinner legs. So there are pros to this tripod, definitely cons to it as well. It's a, it's a give and take. Moving on to this one right here. So this is a four piece leg system as well with a center column. So this one is obviously a much larger tripod than the infield. This one right here is the kit V2 from two veg tripods. So I don't even know this is, this probably ain't even gonna be in frame. I don't think so. Um, so you've got four four piece leg system with a two piece center column and this thing is a pretty doggone massive has the option to be massive now if I could only have one tripod it would be something of this nature so a four piece leg system uh, I don't mind the center column I'll get into that in just a second but this one right here is the perfect size for a do everything tripod is small enough that I can fit it in a pack relatively easy. It's not getting snagged up on a bunch of stuff. It's got thick enough legs that I don't get too much flex. And then with the center column, uh, it's, it's very quick to make, uh, make small adjustments. The disadvantage to a center column is definitely going to be sacrificing stability. Uh, it's just it's just physics. Uh, it's, most of these things can be answered with simple physics. But you add that center column, for one, that's another piece that can move. Uh, that's, that's another piece that has to fall within a tolerance. So that's an extra fail point or extra point of movement. So there's going to be, you're going to sacrifice some stability there. Also, the higher up that you get your center of gravity off of the base, again, it's just physics. That's that's going to be less stable. So I generally, I'm not using the center column, you know, to max height. If I'm running a camera or something like that, I sometimes will because I'm not too worried about stability on a camera. Um, but with rifle, the higher up that you put that center column, the less stable that it is going to be. So it's generally preferred not to shoot off of the center column uh, with it extended, but it's nice to, if you've got different uh, size shooters on the line or you've got, you're set up for one terrain, you got to pick up and move quickly. Then having that center column is a nice feature because you can, you know, adjust it an inch or two and you're not really losing too much stability, but it saves you a lot of time from having to reach down mess with the legs and make the adjustments that way so whether or not you should have a center column uh, i think it's i like to have the option i just try not to use it too often because i don't like sacrificing that stability it's also extra weight now i could remove this center column run the uh run the head directly on top of the tripod in the bowl and then i could utilize this next leg piece but you can see how thin that leg piece is. And so, as I mentioned, talking about the infield, the thinner the leg piece, the less stable that it's gonna be. So I generally don't even use that leg piece. And it just so happens for me, I can drop out two leg sections. 
and it puts the tripod pretty much at perfect height for shooting. So put the head right there on my sternum, perfect height for shooting, and then any uh, fine adjustments that I need to make, then I just make it with the center column and deal with uh, the sacrifice and stability. Moving over to this next one, this is the Two Vets Recon V2 LSI. So the I stands for inverted. So if you look at this tripod right here, the leg piece drops out from the bottom. So the thicker leg piece is up top, whereas with the inverted, it's reversed. So the thicker leg piece is on the bottom and it slides from uh, the, that big leg piece is on the outside, so it slides out on the bottom, and as you get to the top, then the thinner the leg piece goes. Now, what makes that really good is, obviously, the thinner the leg piece, the less stable it is gonna be. So with this one, you can drop your th thickest leg piece down to the bottom. That gives you a really, really good base extremely sturdy base. This is probably the most stable tripod that I have. Those thicker leg pieces really help with that. And then when you need to make adjustments, it's a lot easier to do it with the smaller leg pieces and with them being right here at the top. So this one actually is uh, one of the quickest adjusting tripods that there is because right here, need to make any sort of adjustments. I can do it by reaching down right there as opposed to trying to do it on like a normal tripod, if I need to make any sort of adjustments, then I've got to reach a lot further down on the tripod to make those adjustments. Right here, makes it really, really nice with being able to drop that thickest leg all the way to the bottom so you're maximizing stability with that thick leg. And then with the second leg piece, you can make the quick adjustments because it's right there within reach. So that is the benefit to the inverted tripod. Now the disadvantage to the inverted tripod is if you want to run any sort of accessories. So you'll see here on this one, this is the QDT V2. Remove the tack table and bag off of it real fast. So now something like this, oh, by the way, this is a three uh, three-piece leg system. So we've got a four-piece leg system, four-piece leg system, three-piece leg system, and a two-piece leg system. So this has only got one locking collar and two leg pieces. So you can very easily see when comparing these two. You know, it's a set up on the tripods. Well, let's go ahead and put them at equal height. All right, so set up on the tripods. If I need to make any sort of adjustments on this one, it's right here, very easy to reach, versus on this one, if I'm set up at the wrong height, for me to adjust it, you know, I'm gonna have to reach all the way down, come way off target, come way off the rifle to make those adjustments. There are some tricks that you can do. You know, you can just adjust the legs, bring them, ooh, excuse me, bring them in and out, and you can make quick adjustments so you can work around it. What I was talking about with the disadvantage to something like this, which is an inverted tripod, obviously the pro is it's gonna be the most stable, it's gonna be really quick to adjust. Disadvantage is if you want to run any sort of tripod accessories, you're very limited on what you can do. So on this one right here, I've got some tripod legging set up from Coltec, as well as a, a hammock system. So I really like that hammock system, you know, if I'm running sort of some sort of glass or what have you, you know, it just gives a good place to put that kind of stuff, range finders, binoculars, cell phone, uh, anything like that makes it really nice. You can't do that on this tripod because of the nature of how it's built. If you used to try to run, you could run tripod leggings on it, that's fine, but they're going to be down at the bottom because... You'd be mounting them here, and so you're gonna extend that tripod, and now you, you've just now pushed your tripod leggings all the way down to the ground, and you cannot run any sort of hammock system like this if you're planning on collapsing the tripod because, well, physics. Uh, that, that thing is not gonna stretch that far, and even if it did, why would you want one all the way down there? So now we'll go ahead and move into the QDT V2. Now, with everything, the thicker the legs, the more stable it is. So running just a two-piece leg system, 
means that even your smallest leg is extremely thick. So this one is extremely stable. Now it can hold a lot of weight. It's really nice once you're set up in position, but with the nature of it, with those uh, locking collars being down, uh, you know, basically halfway down the tripod, if you, when you do have to make some adjustments, that is a long way down to reach. But generally with a tripod like this, I've got it marked and once I get to the range, I'm going to set it up and uh, I've got I've got my tripod legs marked. So I'm going to extend it to that length, which is like my standard length right there at the sternum if I'm on level ground. And that's how I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to be collapsing it much, uh, carrying it through the field. I will do something of the nature of locking my rifle in to it and then I will carry the whole setup with the rifle locked. So it's really good if you're like a varmint hunter and you're doing a lot of nighttime stuff, you know, in the field, you don't really want to be fooling with tripod legs. So you leave it fully extended, walk, get into position. I can set up the tripod real fast and it's already at the height that I need it and I'm ready to, ready to, to get to business. So there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to every setup. You just got to take into consideration what you're planning on doing with it. So obviously, you know, these two tripods are for completely different uses. This is a very big, heavy, sturdy tripod, whereas this one is a lightweight, easy to carry. You're not really going to have a reason to leave it at home. But there's going to be limitations to both of them on what they can actually do. So that's why if I was only going to have one which would suck because I like tripods. Uh, if I was only going to have one, it would be something of this nature right here, which is a four four piece leg system with a, with a center column because this one is a perfect, as I mentioned, is a perfect kind of do everything. I run it as a camera tripod a lot. Um, obviously I shoot off of it quite a bit. By the way, these, uh, this tripod legging scrim, this is from Carcass U Tactical. I've got a link down in the description. You can get you, uh, save you a little bit of money on it. Of everything Carcass U Tactical. Um, but as I mentioned, this right here would be like the perfect kind of do everything tripod because it smacks down, packs down small enough to fit in a pack, but it holds enough weight, it's sturdy enough, and it gets to the right height to where, uh, it makes a good one if you're doing standing a lot of standing shooting. Now, another disadvantage to the center column that I forgot to mention is makes it hard to go into prone. So obviously you are limited on how low you can go when running a center column. You know, if you're at a kneeling position, that's fine. But as soon as you want to go into prone, which you can do on tripods generally, you can shoot from the prone position. You know, obviously the nature of that is not gonna work. So you're very limited on how low you can go. And that is going to be just dependent on the length of the center column. Whereas something without a center column, put it all the way down to the floor if you want to. So that is a disadvantage to running a center column is uh, you lose the ability to actually go in the prone with it because you've got that center column sticking way out there. So that's definitely something to take into consideration. I'm not too worried about shooting prone with a tripod. It's not something that I do a lot of, uh, which I don't shoot in the prone a lot because tall grass and landscape and all that as i mentioned in my tripods versus bipods versus bags video and does more gear make you uh more accurate i believe is how it's titled now moving into tripod heads it's a whole other uh whole other piece of the conversation so uh let's see there's not too much to cover but i do gotta grab now, talking about tripod heads, it's a whole other piece of the conversation. So we'll start off with, um, you know, the most common is generally going to be an Arca head. So this one right here is from Two Veg Tripods. 
So it's just a straight Arca Swiss, uh, Arca Swiss head. So anything that has a, an Arca plate on it, whether that be a rifle, locks in, you know, I can pull the rifle off, I can throw my camera on because it is running Arca as well. Can run, you know, a spotting scope that's got an Arca plate on it, can run binos that's got an Arca plate on it. And then you can even run like a, a tack table. So it's just a little table, a little plate that you can mount an Arca, Arca mount on the bottom. This plate is from uh, Sun and Shadow, as I mentioned. So you can run that. Everything, you can put Arca on pretty much anything and lock it in. So that is definitely going to be one of the preferred options for a lot of people. You've also got something like this. So this is an Arca slash Picatinny. So what's cool about this is it works exactly the same as this, except there's a little recessed area that uh, actually accepts Picatinny as well. So this head is actually a prototype. Uh, the ball head itself is from two vets tripods and this mount right here is a prototype that I was sent out Can't can't tell you the company. Hopefully it goes into production But what's nice about that is I mentioned it works exactly like Arca all of your Arca stuff drops in without making any adjustments You can also lock in uh, Lock in Picatinny stuff as well. So Really cool being able to maybe lock in a pistol to sight that in a lot of you guys running quad rails you don't really want to add an arca plate onto your quad rail because you've already got the quad rail so this is what makes a really nice option uh for that sorry guys i've got bugs all over me there's a bunch of gnats down here so you do have the option to do something like this as i mentioned all of your arca stuff works in it as well without any changes whatsoever uh, there's several options on the market for a Picatinny slash Arca head. You've got something of the nature of, um, let's see, we'll remove a swap head real quick. So now something like, uh, something that is dedicated for glassing, something that uh, works really well is going to be something like this. This is a level head from two veg tripods. So it's a lot lighter weight. You've got the little um, arm on the back of it, and then it's not a ball head. So where with a ball head, once you loosen it up, you've got all the space in the world to move that thing. So it's nice, but it also can be a little bit of a pain in the butt when you need to make just like a fine adjustment, and you loosen it up a little bit too much, the weight throws your optic or what have you mounted on there. Where something like this, Is really nice for glassing, which was the intended purpose of this tripod and head because you're limited on the amount of movement that you can get. So you're getting side to side and up and down, but you're not, you're rotating on two axes. So it's not just a ball head where it can swivel any which way. You've got two axes of movement, so you can loosen it up. And then with that arm, makes it really nice when you go to pan hopefully this is yeah i think that's still in frame so with that arm you can pan and then you can also make the adjustments up and down so for glassing this is going to be a huge benefit because it gives you much more control over that very small movement it can work in a pinch when you go to shoot but it's not going to be ideal for one that arm is out in the way and that generally interferes with the magazine uh, makes it a really tight fit also this head is not meant to hold as much weight it's a leveling head so if as long as you've got something lightweight on it that head is going to center up with gravity and it's going to level it out and then once you do need to make those adjustments you've got the two uh two point uh two axis how do i say that you've you've got two points of movement so it's on that uh that double axis movement so left and right up and down so that makes a nice setup if you are planning on glassing or running a camera but it's not ideal for shooting and then you've got something like this system right here which a lot of y'all are going to be familiar with this one is from man billy which is actually the tripod setup that i'm running it's from man billy as well um 
Now this is going to be like a vice system. This one, as I mentioned, is from Man Billy. You've got the bog pod, uh, the death grip, you've got the hog saddle, you've got the pig saddle. And all it is, is is a ball head with, instead of an arca plate on top, it's got this clamp. Now what's nice about that is you can lock absolutely anything that falls within the perimeter of the adjustment of the vise. You can lock anything in there. So whether that be a pistol, uh, you can lock a rifle, you can lock a shotgun, you can lock a sword if you want to. Like anything that you want to lock in, you can lock in. And now that picks it up off the ground unless you're running off of a tripod. Hang on guys, we got a helicopter flying over. So as I mentioned, you can lock anything into this. Uh, so it's really nice if you want to go from sighting in a pistol, you can lock that in. Um, obviously the rifles lock into it as well. So that's uh, works really well for that kind of thing. It's quick. Uh, all your buddies can lock into it or you can lock your hunting rifles into it. And you ain't got to worry about the extra weight of adding an arca rail to your rifle, but this is going to be much heavier on the tripod and is typically going to offer less stability. Definitely advantages to it, but it's not perfect. Another option is going to be something similar to what I've got going on right here. Now this is actually, uh, this table is actually locked in with Arca. So it's not the head per se, but the uh, manner in which I'm running it. So as I mentioned, this is, this tack table is from Sun and Shadow, and then I've got a Coltac bag mounted onto it. Pull the bag off. And it's nothing more than just this piece of Kydex that is, a. Uh, I mean, it's got a little bit of, of upgrade, but this is, a, this is a piece of Kydex. You can get metal ones, you can get polymer ones, you can get 3D printed. This one's Kydex, as I mentioned. And I've mounted an Arca plate on the bottom of it, but you could actually run this directly to the tripod, and that would make a extremely lightweight setup. The advantage to running like a, a plate with a bag on top of it is generally you're going to get more stability running it that way this is going to be the most stable setup as opposed to actually locking into arca because you've got that soft contact in between hard on hard that rifle is going to form to it really well the bag's going to basically cradle the rifle and then having that soft contact is going to absorb a lot of your shakes a lot of your wobble a lot of your heartbeat uh, just a lot of that, those micro movements that's going to be amplified when you're locked into the uh, tripod directly through Arca because that is a lot of hard on hard contact. So being able to throw something soft between there makes it really nice, makes it really stable. It's also nice when you need to do transitions. So it's really easy to pivot on this bag because you're not confined to a single point of contact and now you're rotating on that and it almost feels like you're uh you know then you're having to basically rotate around the tripod because the rifle's locked into that one position whereas this right here makes it really nice because nothing's locked in really quick to disengage really quick to engage you can pick up off the tripod and move positions really fast uh the disadvantage to this is obviously going to be balancing your rifle Whereas running just straight Arca, lock it in, leave it pointed down range. You can walk away. You can do what you need to do. I talk about that in the tripods versus bipods versus bags video. So there's there's a lot of options that you can do, uh, which is why I wanted to make this video. Just kind of go over my setups and maybe throw in a couple points uh, to help guide you in your journey in buying a tripod. Because there's a lot of details that you can get caught up in. There's a lot of options. Whether do you want, you know, a lightweight tripod, do you want something heavier, do you need it compact, do you, are you fine with it being a bigger tripod? And then once you decide on a tripod, then you've got to decide on which head you want to run on said tripod. So it can be pretty stressful. I get asked about it a lot, so that's why I wanted to make this video. Uh, so instead of trying to answer the same question over and over again in text or Instagram DMs, I could just send the link of this video and have y'all watch it. 
I'm sure I missed something. Uh, again, this is just a quick down and dirty, straight to the point, uh, kind of shotgun style video. Not getting too scientific with it. It's going to be very little editing, very, uh, just very blunt and to the point. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Hopefully y'all got something out of it. If y'all do have any questions, something that I missed, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer you. If it's a good enough question, I'll just make a whole, whole doggone video on it and give you a shout out. Again, I want to give a special thank you to Two Vets Tripods for all of their support and what I do, as well as Coltac and Sun and Shadow. I uh, could not make this video without them. They've provided a lot of stuff that I just I don't have the budget for, but they have entrusted me to send some products out so that I could get out this video and other videos as well. If you're interested in uh, cool photography, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'll have that link down in the description if you want to make sure you're part of all the action going on. Definitely check that out. I also have some links down there, uh, some discount codes, maybe save you a little bit of money on something like uh, these Carcassie Tactical Tripod Scrim leggings. Really cool product. Uh, there's some other stuff down there as well. But with that being said, I think we're done with it. I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you on the next one.